Okay, it's recording. Okay, welcome to the fourth quarter uh, Tooele City Library Board meeting. It is October 24th, 2024 at 7.08 p.m. Um, let's start with roll call. Crystal Ford. Julie Ruff. Berna Sloan. Chase Randall. Malcolm Walden. Shana Roth. Melody Barnett. Crystal Lormer. Eric Newman. And Melody Gotis on the phone, and she will be arriving soon. Uh, we'll start with um, reports. Melody, do you have anything for us for uh, City Council? I'd like to give my report when I arrive. Perfect. Okay, we will go on to the library report then. All right, so you all have a copy of my uh, library director comments, so I'll just uh, run through our, the status of the library. So the big announcement, and I mentioned this in our last meeting that I hinted it was coming, but it is now well on its way. So we are going to be changing our ILS, or Integrated Library System, aka the catalog. So the current vendor that we use, um, it's just, it gets the job done, but it's not exemplary in any way, shape, or form. And it is overpriced for what it provides. So we are going to be switching to another company, it's called Bywater. They're the support company and we're going to be using the open source um, system called Koha and we're getting the premium version of Aspen as well. So essentially it's how we'll manage all of our books, all of your everyone's accounts, being able to search for books, everything related to that. So we're super excited for it. We're currently going through the implementation. We hope to go live the end of January. Um, this will have many, many benefits, including but not limited to significant cost savings for the library. Instead of paying twenty grand a year, we'll only pay eight thousand a year. Um, and considering the our current vendor has raised the price the last you, three years, that's twenty three thousand, right? So no, so so from twenty thousand, we're dropping down to eight thousand. Okay, I thought you said hundred. No, well, yeah, yeah, no. So <laughs> so significant cost savings. And when I reached out to the to the Spanish Fork Library, who's had this vendor for the last ten years, and I asked them how often have they raised your prices, they said never. So I'm I'm optimistic. Technically, the contract says it can be every two years that they could raise the price, but they said they said that too, but they never did. So I'm really optimistic. This will be beneficial from a cost savings perspective for the library but then also the system is significantly better I'm super excited for it one big thing I hope to do cross fingers no promises but I was my big project by next summer is that a person can get a library card purely online that they could um, get a card completely online and then come in and get the physical card get books or even possibly we mail them the card there's some several hurdles we'd have to overcome to get that but I'm very excited for it um, the other big thing is I would I hope you guys after the meeting take a second to kind of look around the library I've we bought some signs I don't know if any of you've noticed them yet but signs delineating the different sections of the library we have a couple more that are coming and we're gonna move one around the children's one to a different spot just because right now it's kind of blocked by the pillar and by the other thing so I want to move it to a slightly better spot um, additionally we are fully staffed and have been fully staffed now for um, basically since July which has been really nice we had a, a decent amount of turnover in the last year, actually. We, we had, uh, went through, I think, three or four, yeah, three different three different people left, so we had to find replacement for them in the what last year. What is the staff number? Now? So 15, counting myself. So um, Next, so as far as building and grant projects, so we've talked a couple times about the library canopy in the back to improve staff safety and also um, fix that sidewalk that the tree roots have done a number on. Um, I, we just opened the bids today, and I should said bids, but I should say bid. There was only one bid, so um, I'm just finalizing things with the contract. It's, it's a little late in the season, and it'll go, it'll go before the city council uh, at the November 6th uh, city council meeting. Once they approve it, then we, they can start work, which that'll be November, so I doubt it'll happen until spring. But, um, the other thing is I'm working with the Parks and Rec director that we're going to get a new boiler installed here in the library. Um, hopefully very, very soon, within the next week or two. Um, overall, after having some good discussions with the mayor, I have been able to set aside um, at least about 20000 hopefully, to zero escape this front section here. And you can see all the molehills and dandelions. And, um, I'm hoping to make it look like the zero escaping that was done at the city hall. So. Have you seen the zero escaping up by the golf course? I need to go look at that. The, the new, with all the new development, is that what you're referring to? Um, it's around the clubhouse. Oh, the clubhouse. I'll have to go check it out. So. Did anybody smell smoke when they came in? Yeah. 
I saw a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I didn't notice it until you just said it. So I noticed yeah. it a couple. A so it could bit, be feeling someone's smoking right out there because the intake is right there. Is it around the whole clubhouse? I was just there this afternoon. I didn't actually didn't. To me, it smells like a wood burn still. Yeah, on, yeah. The, on the corner. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure. No, yeah, it's being. I'm just to that every day. When they close the clubhouse, we have to do that. Oh, I wonder if something's it actually on fire, yeah. not just a wood burning stone. Like an yeah. outside fire, too. I saw somebody doing it yesterday, so. Yeah, so I, I think it's someone's burning outside. something out there because it was very strong outside. And yeah, okay. But it's not the light burning. I don't think so. It's, it's not the light if, if, if it gets really strong. I just thought it was a wood burning stone. <laughs> I could have sworn there was one in here when they came in with their inspection. Well, there's, yeah. yeah, right, yeah. yeah. It's not going off. So, yeah, because, well, because, yeah, I think it's just pulling air. Like, we, I don't know if this was several months ago at City Hall, we had to evacuate City Hall because someone drove down Main Street with like an open valve on their truck. Oh my oh. gosh. So, we all suddenly started smelling gas when we were at the mayor's staff meeting. It and was like entire Main Street. Yeah, all Main Street had all had. had DDI vans. Yeah, everybody yes. evacuated yeah. because. Mm -hmm. Didn't see that one. Because my son had a meeting. And they were like, we could come early. We can't go in our building. Wow. Yeah, so. It's like, come on over. <laughs> yeah, it, it made us all evacuate, but then they came and tested, and it was just the the HVAC system was pulling it from outside and putting That's it inside crazy. the building. Yeah. So. Anyway. So. Okay. Zero okay. escaping. All right. So the other project, um, I was hoping to be able to present it. I was, I was hoping to be able to present it before the city council on November 6th as well, um, but that's going to have to wait. Just the cost is going to be higher than we were anticipating, so we're getting a buffalo here at the library. Woo! Um, I'm, I'm not going to reveal—I can't reveal the sponsor yet or anything like that—but just the location is going to be between the two big trees over here in the park strip. Okay. So we're thinking we're going to put cement that whole park strip, do some stamped concrete, so we're zero escaping or no, so removing grass. Um, at the same time of adding the buffalo as well as a couple picnic tables. So that's the tentative oh, nice. plan right now, subject to change, but. For the yeah. buffalo, I, um, does the sponsor you get to paint or decorate it, or how does that happen? So we contract, so the mayor's office contracts with an artist and coordinates with the sponsor to decide on the design and stuff. Um, that's all still being worked out. I don't have details on that yet. That's cool. Do you know how many buffaloes we have in the city right now? Oh, I don't, off the top of my head. How much does the buffalo cost? I'm just so um, curious. So for the buffalo yeah, itself? I want one of my hands. For the buffalo itself, I'm not sure. I know this project. I'm just I'm just taking care of the landscaping side of the project, so I don't I don't know that off the top of my head. Um, you could ask the mayor's office. I don't. Do they have to use boat tape to do them. I added an essay for someone who did one. Oh, that's. They do. They have that many colors. Yeah. So. There go. And then um, on this same note, one thing that I would like to um, maybe have you all stew over is in the back of the library we have that glass big glass and then there's the kind of the little alcove mm -hmm. and there's a cement pad there that's technically originally was there for a statue at a later date so it's now been 24 years since the library was built um so i've started thinking like what would be a, a, a fun statue to put there to look at obviously it's kind of out of the way right you'd have to get in the library to really see it um one thing i thought of was like maybe like Kind of those, the bronze statue of just like a family reading a book together or something. Okay. So just think about it and we can discuss at the next board meeting. Um, they, did, uh, they did have one that was on loan. At oh, they one did? Point. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You loan statues out? <laughs> well, it was on display. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what, what library is that? You can get a loan of a, I know, right? a statue. Yeah. 
We could just do that and switch it up. Hey, we're doing tele. Oh, I forgot to add that on here. We're doing telescopes. We got um, we we bought at cost two scale telescopes from the Salt Lake Astronomical Society. They're wow. going to handle all the maintenance of it. Um, we're getting them ready to circulate right now. So I'm hoping by the end of the month that those will be available. You mean to use here at the library? Or no, no, you can take it. It's a big, oh, wow. full telescope. And that is cool. Cool. Oh, so we cool. needed one this summer. It's like, yeah, like, so keep an eye out. I'm hoping within the next yet. week. Very cool. Right. So, um, we're going to add some more security cameras. Just there's some blind spots that we've noticed at over, because it's been now about a year and a half since the library got security cameras. And we've noticed there's some blind spots, so we're adding a couple more. And then we've completed a, a project that we coordinated with the UEN, which is the Utah Education Network. So we've expanded Wi-Fi coverage for the city park over here, because before it was just the it was just the east side of the park that had Wi-Fi coverage, but now it's the entire park has Wi-Fi coverage. And we also expanded to the park that's just past, just on Vine, east on Vine, the Del Papa Park. Mm -hmm. We got Wi-Fi coverage there as well, and we're going to look at future sites next year. So. After you mentioned the pad out there, has anyone ever talked about any plans to uh, take up the time capsule that's out there? I don't think so. I, yeah, no, I haven't talked about it. 25 years is coming up here since we I'll, did. I'll look into that. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think about it. I don't know if we're going to go to 50 or 100 or what. Yeah, I'll look into that. We, yes. we put that in when this new library opened. Yeah. And with the 25 year anniversary, you know. Okay. Yeah, I'll look into that. Is that not Vine Street Park? Which park? The park right there. The official name for it. It's just, I just know it as the, the aquatic pool park or the pool park. The pool park. See, the park. Yeah, the pool park. I think it's officially like Twilla City Park or something, but it's, it's the pool park. So. I have an idea for the pad. Okay, yeah. What if you have like a little thing up here for suggestions so patrons can come in and give a suggestion? Mm. You can get more ideas that way. Okay. And yeah. then maybe if you find something really cool, like people can vote on it or like it can be like a community kind of thing. Okay, I'll look into that and we'll discuss. Because it might, depending on the cost, it might be something oh. for like a couple of years out or something. Yeah, so. You can do like a fundraiser too. Yeah. And I was thinking coordinating with the Friends of the Library. Mm -hmm because they donate every year. Yeah. So. Um, and then we've got inventory the week of Thanksgiving because we're closed Tuesday through that whole week. So we're only open Monday. Um, so that's when we do our full inventory. We scan everything wow. and see what's grown legs and walked off. So. Oh. Um, They're about do 10 you have grand a piece, by the way. That oh, what? Wow. Say that again, sorry. Do you ever there. have anything that comes in? Yes, we, we just like, oh, we, this is here. Yeah, I've done that. Cool, cool. I've turned in books that don't belong to the library. Oh, yeah, no, we get we get books from for Twilla City, for Twilla High School books. We get no, Grantsville City book. Library books <laughs> all the time. Sometimes just random <laughs> books that aren't yeah. in the library no, books. So. Um, and then today we're just doing two policy proposal changes to the standards of conduct and the library card policy, which we'll discuss shortly. So, okay, any questions? Um, we'll open the floor for public comment period, but there is no public here. So next will be our discussion items. Uh, first is the updated library card policy. All right. So the library card policy, um, there's just a minor change that, we're, that we wanted to make to it. Um, this has been reviewed by the mayor and the city attorney. So if you look under section 2.1.2, uh, where it's describing what sorts of government issued photo, go, sorry, sorry, what sorts of proof of addresses are acceptable. So to get a library card, each person needs to come in with a photo ID, and if their current address is on their photo ID, they're good to go. Otherwise, they need a photo ID and a proof of their current address. And here you can see we list all the things that we accept as a proof of address. So lease agreement, mortgage papers, cell phone bill, utility or cell phone bill, bank statement or checkbook, paycheck stub government issued correspondence or home or car insurance. So the change we're, we're making is we're going to exclude forwarded mail or change of address verification from USPS. The reason being is anyone can get that. You can just go and say, hey, I've moved or I've changed my address and they'll believe you for those yeah. two items. So we've just had some issues with some patrons that were trying to use those as a proof of address and we're just wanting to clarify that we, we don't accept those. So they, they have to be it can't be either of those two items. So, 
Does anyone have any questions about that? Concerns? Um, I have, when I read this at home, I, one thing that occurred to me is uh, I don't know how much of a homeless problem Tula has, but uh, do we have homeless people come to the library? And since they don't have a physical residence, if they live here, they're not actually able to use the library. So, I mean, they can come in, they just can't get a library card. So There, there are services for the homeless, but they can provide them with that local address as well. So they'd be able to get a card from that? Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. That's good. Yeah. So, like, for example, we have had some patrons that say they live at the Harris Community Village or Switch Point, for example. Um, but if you look under, um, where is it? Um, yeah, 1.7, it does say library cards will not be issued to people without a permanent residence. And so we don't count homeless shelters, halfway houses. Those are not permanent addresses. So if, so if people do come in with mail, but it's at like the Harris Community Village, we, we don't allow it, we don't give them a library card. They're more than welcome to come in, read the books, use the computer, right? Use the Wi-Fi, but they just can't get a library card. Understood. So, okay. Um, any other questions, concerns, or comments about this change? I make a motion we accept. Second. <laughs> okay. Do you want to do it officially? Sorry. Can I get a motion? <laughs> <laughs> I'm you ready got this. Ready. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Uh -huh. I make a motion we accept. And I second. All right. Thank you, Berna and Malcolm. <laughs> okay. Uh, next is going to be the Don't wait to vote. vote. Oh, oh. I did that last time, too. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, everyone in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. The... Updated library card policy has been accepted. Uh, next will be the updated standard of conduct policy. All right, so in our last um, library board meeting, we discussed at length the minor access policy. Um, some changes were tossed around, and we had, I think, a really good discussion about that to hear from you guys as the, as the public, right? Um, well, I took a lot of those thoughts, and I researched some other libraries, and then I had a good discussion with the staff, with my leadership team, and as well as the general library staff, um, as well as a good conversation with the mayor mm -hmm. and the city attorney, made sure we're all on the same page. So out of all those discussions came the changes that I proposed to you all today. So this is all on, so I just made a couple minor um, grammar and formatting changes on the first couple pages. But if we go to section nine and 10, this is where the meat of the changes are. So the first one is in 9.1, so under section 9, facility access for minors, it says minors under the age, so the current policy says minors under the age of 10, we're changing that to 9. So minors who are under the age of 9 must be accompanied or adequately supervised on premise by a parent, legal guardian, other responsible adult individual accepting responsibility for the minor, or, and this is the new section, a responsible 16 or 17 year old who meets the criteria described in section 9.2. So that way, if older brother or sister is bringing in younger brother or sister or something like that, or they're babysitting or whatever, that 16 or 17 year old can be the responsible individual for those children under the age of nine if that 16 or 17 year old has their own minor pass. So they have to have, so they have, to have gotten a pass as described in section 9.2 to be able to supervise minors under the age of nine. Any questions, concerns, comments about that section? So this does mean that nine-year-olds, which we'll get to in 9.2, so 9.2 it says minors aged nine through 17 must be accompanied and adequately supervised on premise by, by a responsible adult individual age 18 or older accepting responsibility for the minor. Alternatively, the minor may be allowed entrance access if a written authorization and acceptance of responsibility is on file with the library signed by a parent, grandparent, or a legal guardian. So this is now saying that a nine-year-old can come in unsupervised if they have the minor access pass. Alternatively, if that minor, if the nine through 17-year-old comes in and anybody who's an adult says, yes, I'm responsible for Jimmy over here, then that's fine. We might ask the 18-year-old or old adult to prove like, hey, you are over eight, you're 18 or older. Um, but then they can, so basically any, any adult can supervise, be the supervisory person or responsible individual for any minor child. So, there you go. so we're, 
So any questions on either of those two sections? So there's a, you have a, a physical file that has the, the papers that signed? The yes. Yeah, so if, a, if a, someone, if a minor is age 9 to 17, they want, their parents want them to, or legal guardian or grandparent wants to be able to come to the library without having to have an adult supervising them, that, that parent, legal guardian or grandparent has to sign the form saying yes, like I acknowledge my child and or whoever is my child or grandchild is responsible and I understand that they're responsible, then they sign that form and then we give the child a pass and then they can come in without having to have an adult. This is just to help reduce that friction that we talked about that sometimes, and, and I know we talked about some kids that were nine um, that wanted to, that were it's counting down the days till they turned 10 so they could come into the <laughs> library uh, by themselves. So this is just to help reflect that. I, I actually looked up a bunch of other libraries because I was kind of curious, like some libraries don't really have a minor policy. Basically they just say if it's a young child, it's a problem. But if it's not, it's kind of a lot more gray. Some libraries had it as eight or younger. I felt like that was a bit of a step too far, so I proposed nine. Um, and that also lines up with our programs because we have tween time, which is nine to 12 year olds. Mm -hmm. And it didn't seem to make sense to say, hey, nine year old, your mom has to sit around while you're here versus 10 year old, hey, come on in, right? So this is just to bring, this, this changes to bring that policy kind of in line with our practice already and to reduce the friction with the public and make the library easier to get into. The only, the concern that was raised by some of my staff and a decent amount of the staff were anxious about like gang of teenagers coming in with, oh, here's Johnny, he's 18, so he's the responsible adult. And I think that's just a natural consequence. Like, I didn't think it made any sense to try and distinguish between like, like if once they're an adult, they're an adult. Like to try and nitpick that just made no sense at all. And so I think it's just something the staff will, will just have to be on top of, right? Because yeah, you can come and babysit your 17-year-old friend, right? If you're 18, but if you if you guys start misbehaving, then we just apply the standards of conduct as they state, and we verbal warnings, written warnings, kick you out, all the all those steps. So, and how often does that happen? So it hasn't happened since this the minor policy was put into place. Um, I think the they they got the message that the library was not the place to cause a ruckus anymore. So we haven't had any issues, but some staff just expressed concern that this was opening the door to all the problems coming back. But I've been very on top of it, and I don't think that's going to be a problem. I feel like it's someone who's going to go and read to find the loophole. Gonna be <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's true, too. Someone's that determined. So any other questions, concerns, comments about sections 9.1 or 9.2? And then the only other change in this section was in 9.5. Um, it's just removing the some limited discretion to just say discretion. So like for example, I, I did have a 17 year old who came in who was, um, I, she was trying to become an emancipated minor, like had a really crazy home situation. And after talking with this, with this person, I was able to be like, I think this is a, a moment to maybe exercise some discretion. You turn 18 in two months. like. So there is some discretion that I can do with that. I'm going to try to obviously keep that limited, but that just is making it clear that yes, I can, on a case-by-case -case basis, if it's extraordinary circumstances, we can let the kid in. So. Any other questions, concerns? Okay. Section 10, the edits here were mainly to kind of bring it in line with the changes made in section 9. So this section that's in red right here under 10.1, the bullet point under 10.1, I just moved it from the bottom, put it at the top so it's easier to, to see and read. And it just says, minors nine and older must be sufficiently mature and able to abide by all standard, all conduct standards before visiting the library without a responsible supervising adult. So it just clarifies if you've got someone, a kid comes in with a little hammer and just loves to destroy everything, no, gotta be responsible. Um, and then just down here was a minor formatting change and then I added a couple words to this section where it says when a minor is required to leave the library due to conduct, the library is closing, or any other reason and circumstances such as age or time of day pose a potential safety concern for a minor, proper authorities, the police may be contacted to assume responsibility for that minor. So just clarifies if it's 8 o'clock and we're closing down and I come across 9 year old Jimmy over here and I, you're like, hey, uh, you got a ride? Like is someone coming to pick you up? And especially now it's getting dark with the winter. 
uh, we don't want to just send them out in the cold. So that, that's where we then maybe, hey, what's your phone number for your parents? And try to go through that before eventually if we got nothing and we got to leave, it's now 8.30 or whatever, we're going to call the police at that point. So just to clarify that. And then the other change in the paragraph below that is just changing it from 10 to 9, like we put in the other section. So, any other, any questions, concerns, comments about this one? Okay. Sweet. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve the updated standards of conduct policy? I have a motion. Can I get a second? Also Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, it has been approved to update the standards of conduct policy. Uh, should we finish the next two and then go for your report? Well, wait, we can go now. You want to do your, okay. Uh, Melody, um, our city council rep, has her city council report. Uh, thank you for the accommodation to allow me to uh, join by phone. That's so nice to be able to do that. I'd just like to tell you a couple of things that are exciting in the city. Uh, um, we served on the, Malcolm and I served on the Arts Council, so it's kind of fun to see what the Arts Council is able to do. We have the art, um, the, the Ritz Theater has a magician that is coming, and so we'd like people to be aware of that, that they, we have really great opportunities and they're expanding the, the use of the, the Ritz Theater to be able to have um, movies and live productions and uh, orchestras if anybody has attended some of the events it's been really fun now they're having to meet focus focus yes i took <laughs> some of my grandkids we went to harry potter <laughs> did yeah. you see harry potter i was, i had some that night very, or i would have <laughs> <laughs> very fun uh there's also a halloween event that is at the railroad museum that's going on right now that's really fun uh the city council just attended yeah, that's up, that one's over Oh, okay. Thanks for letting me know. Because I have my, I had stuff there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't realize what the ending date was, but it was well attended. Um, also of interest is, you know, speaking of well attendance, is the uh, LDS Church had an open house for the temple, and uh, we had visitors from all over the country, and over a hundred thousand visitors wow. to yeah, attend into our city. Hundred and thirty thousand. Wow. So, uh, you know, we're happy that we didn't have any traffic incidents and right. uh, no no incidents that we're aware of that have been reported, and so it it was a, a good visibility for Tula City. Also, um, oh, that. I, I talked to a guy who worked at the who works at the Seven Eleven slash Wendy's, mm -hmm. right there on One Thousand North, and he said, yeah, every 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 day they were just getting slammed. Wow. Right. By, uh, he's like, I've never seen so many people. Yeah. Yep, yeah. uh, people coming in ties and dresses. That's what he said. So. Yeah, that's anyway. really very good for our businesses. Yeah. Um, we also have a new planned development that is coming online, and it's called Compass Point. Some of you have seen uh, the, a light that is at 3100 on uh, the state road, and that is uh, going to be a big development. Uh, right now they're planning to have commercial and residential development. The road is already paved from SR 36 halfway out, so it's as far as the high school, Desert Peak High School on this side, and they're going to connect to the road that uh, is where we call it Frank's Drive, where the temple is. And uh, they also ha had um, somebody come from the Smith's Marketplace, and so the Perry development is bringing a Smith's Marketplace so along with Compass Point. Do you know approximately when that light will become operational? I don't. Mm -hmm. but. It, it should slow down traffic that, you know, kind of, is, it's a safety factor, and so we hope that it's going to help with that traffic. You know, we have a lot of traffic that's on SR 36 and Main Street, especially during rush hour, but, you know, I don't know a community that doesn't have heavy traffic. Too big you know. road. Right. <laughs> that's where I go. <laughs> so Smith's Marketplace is going to have an anchor, it, it will be the anchor store and it will have four anchor stores along with it. And then along with that, there'll be 12 different establishments that are going to be built outside. They have plans to have Smith's Marketplace uh, ready by November, December of 25. Wow. Serious? So, that serious. That fast. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And also, you've probably seen in the paper the Founders Development. That developer is calling that Project 10th and Main, and that is by the 7-Eleven on 1000 North. And uh, we have several businesses that are committed and some that haven't signed yet. But I'm excited for Chipotle. 
Yes. Uh, uh -huh. It may, you know, might be more of a rumor. Do you know what the check. time frame is that those is are going to start like opening? Like it's not confirmed. And stuff. I don't. I know. That that Chick fil A. I thought that was. Yeah, yeah. It's not confirmed. Yes, like it's dangerous. It's not confirmed. Right now, Which you know, it is confirmed. putting. Chick fil A. Like lease signed. Right. But, uh, Chick fil A is not signed yet. It's confirmed. Uh, I I do have a list. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. Uh, these are the when, these are the the, the businesses that have confirmed: Chipotle, Wingstop, Chili's, Hobby Lobby, Ulta, Five Below, and then there are some additional businesses that they're working on, but they haven't signed contracts for Ross, Dress for Less, Sierra Trading Post, uh, TJ Maxx, Bath and Body, Petco. Chick fil A and Dutch Brothers. And so those are not confirmed. And I don't have confirmation of the other businesses that will be in the Perry development. Mm -hmm. But there are good things that are happening in Tula City. Um, Malcolm mentioned Drew Bay Road, that's a county project. The, uh, the road from Vine Street over to 400, I believe it is, where, where the golf course is, that is a city project that they're widening and improving that road. And from uh, that 400 clear down to Drew Bay is, is county, and I'm not for sure the time frame um, for that. I saw today when I was at the golf course that uh, layer of asphalt and the oil truck was going over it, so it's getting really close. Good. Done. Good. Yeah. Yes. I actually saw cars driving on it today. I don't know what they're supposed yeah, to, they're not but I saw cars driving on no. it. Yeah. <laughs> that, right. when I was the oil the, the truck was sitting right in the middle of it, so that must have been a very brazen yeah, and more cars to get hit by golf balls, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, does anybody have any questions? You know, maybe I could answer some questions that you might have. Um, talked about the Buffalo earlier. Yes. Um, what's the cost to have sponsor one of those Buffalo? Two thousand dollars a year okay. is what the sponsors are paying. And then I did hear the discussion on the phone that um, there are artists that have applied to paint those buffaloes. Okay. And so they're selected out of a pool and the people who are sponsoring have, have the opportunity to select what artists they want. And the okay. artist does submit a drawing or, you know, their, their plans for doing the buffaloes. And we just think they're beautiful. And the one that was destroyed on Main Street when the truck went down has just been repaired and, and replaced. And yeah, so... Yeah, that, that one yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, where was that one located? Um, I can't the remember the, the independent living center. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Transcript bulletin right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't realize that happened. How many buffaloes are there? You didn't see the video? <laughs> I saw the video. I just oh, yeah, you didn't I see it go. <laughs> no, I yeah, haven't I seen that. I'll look it up. I don't oh, yeah. no, I can't remember, but I've seen that before, what the total number of buffaloes are. <laughs> I'm not sure, but they're all walkable, and that's kind of a fun activity. If you know somebody wanted to walk buffalo to buffalo, we've done that before with the city, and I can't remember how many we have, but fun addition. Okay, uh, Chase was talking about getting a library buffalo. Yes. We're working with the mayor's the office to get us. Excellent. Hopefully this spring we'll, we'll get one. Uh -huh. And I really like the um, uh, suggestion, I don't know who suggested, having a community input on the, the statue. You yeah, know. so because we got the back pad right here in the back of the library, right in that alcove. Uh -huh. It's a statue pad. It's been there since they built the library, so we want to start thinking about what statue to put there. So. Yes. And then that brought up a question in my mind is that uh, we put the time capsule in when it's library again, it's coming up to 25 years. You know, if that might be a good time to do it, or does anybody say Yes, I like that. I do too. Yeah, I, I want to see it while I'm still alive because <laughs> the, the staff picture has me in it in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there it. Can't, can't, won't last till 50. So. <laughs> Didn't you say that you uh, helped move the library? That was quite, that was a really a big deal at the time. I don't that know how many of you were aware yes. of that, yeah. but uh, you know that the human chain and the books going. That was it was very cool. <laughs> yeah. And you had oh, a question? I, I just want to know what the buffaloes are made of. Are they ceramic? Are they, like, what are they? You know, I, I really don't know. I don't think they're ceramic. Yeah, I, I, I think it's some so kind of so closet. So like, yeah, it'll be a lot lighter, too. Yeah. It can be repaired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, that concludes yeah. my report. Oh, thank you, Melody. Right. You're welcome. <laughs> um, okay, so we will go move forward to the strategic plan update. Yes. 
So we talked about this in our last meeting um, that as part of the state certification requirements, they want all libraries to have a strategic plan, a generally two or three year strategic plan and a two or three year technology plan. So we, I passed out the draft last time. Um, the only changes that I've made to it since we discussed at the last meeting uh, was just I updated a couple of things, removed a couple of goals that I already did, um, like getting new staff radios, so I already got those. Um, I'm not going to go over everything on here, just the big highlights. So the mission statement that I, that I came up with after discussing with the staff was the Tooele City Public Library exists to spark literacy, foster lifelong learning, and support the community in the quest to seek the good, the true, and the beautiful. And then the vision statements were the Tooele City Public Library will provide the community with fair and equal access to vital information resources, including the greatest invention in human history, the written word. Materials, programs, and technology offered by the library will adapt to a rapidly growing community. And our amazing team of librarians and programmers will give outstanding service to the community in a warm and welcoming environment. Does anyone have any suggestions for change? Any comments or thoughts on the mission statement and the three vision statements? No, say punctuation. Say what? Grammar punctuation comments. Which where? Yeah. Before the written word. Should be an M dash or a colon. Oh, colon. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, no, I. That's what I'm doing. It's good. No, I. Yeah. I, I, I was just like in that spot. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's in front. <laughs> okay. Any any other? Right. Sorry, that was just no. You're like fine. You know, that's why like, we're. That's why we, we're doing this. So. So I. I, had, I like the message. I had a little bit of an issue with the mission statement. Okay. That last line, the good, the true, and the beautiful. Yes. I've heard that somewhere else before, and um, I felt like that kind of puts a value statement on what you're saying. It's, well, a, it's a biblical verse. Well, it's, I mean, it's biblical, but it's also a general Western civilization. Yeah. Yes. So, because, yes, you're right. It does, there, there are, the, you can interpret religious connotations to it, but I would argue that, like, why do we, why spark literacy at all? Well, why sometimes I need to go find out about the gritty, bad, and... No, you, no you're <laughs> right. I, 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 yes, that's not to say that we don't have, obviously, there's books in here that you could definitely argue. Don't promote any of those three things. But ultimately... I would argue that that's the, why, why do communities have libraries, right? It's it's to store knowledge, and I think to support the community. In, in and I, I think it's a really, it's the mission statement has a lot of panache, but it doesn't necessarily cover what your vision is. Okay. And it's not very concise. So um, I had looked up the Grantsville City okay. Libraries mission statement and I really, really liked it because okay. it was so concise um, and I just had a couple um, suggestions that you could maybe use to okay. yeah, well, make ours more concise. Yeah, so like, what, what, would, what would you propose then instead? Well, I had just come up with um, the verbs to enrich, enhance, empower, and engage um, patrons in the pursuit of lifelong learning. What does the Grantsville one say? The Grantsville one says the Grantsville City Library strives to enrich lives, promote literacy, and connect people. Oh, charms too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other thoughts on that? On the vision statement number one, I don't see that the need to have the greatest invention in human history would bring the word has anything to do with it. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's an advertisement, so to speak. Okay. That's just how I look at it. And it just ends vital information resources. Sorry. It does just kind of fluff it up. I get yeah, that. Like, yeah. Because, yeah, I, like, I... I don't know, because so my thought process for it, because I had these similar internal discussions, was I, I don't know, I didn't want to just make a run of the mill like mission statement or vision statement. I wanted to give it a little flair. Uh, but if you guys want me to change it, I can change it. Okay, I like the verbs, because that feels more action. Okay. Just your verbs, you mean? Yeah. I'm really just putting verbs there instead. Any other thoughts? 
I can't hear anything. So okay. I just <laughs> actually, everybody's voices are so Sorry. tiny. I, I personally Except like yours. the greatest intervention in human history. Okay. Uh, it I definitely do. does have flair. Yeah, that's what I wanted to give I a like little the flair, flair, but yeah. so I mean, realistically, like we'll review this every January and kind of just see where we're at in the goals. So, um, what we could do is maybe if you could all just email me individually, kind of what what you guys would have for suggestions, and then next meeting we can finalize it and have a discussion to synthesize kind of everyone's suggestions, and then go from there. Sounds good. Does that work? Will you tell us the words that you said again? I want to write it down. Enrich, empower, engage. <laughs> I think I put added enhance too. Enhance. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good one. One. yeah this is all yours. Oh, right? okay. I thought it was your Yeah, yeah, no, sorry. That's, that's fine. Right. Like I have my see the enhance just the same. Perfect. Okay, anything? Hi. Any feedback on vision statement two or three? Just ask you to repeat that again. Your your suggestions for the verbs. Let me find my notes. To enrich, enhance, and empower. Engage was one of them too. Engage. Enrich, enhance, empower, and engage in the pursuit of life. So my voice is good? Your voice is good. All right. So hopping hopping to page two for the strategic plan. So we got vision statement one, which is the same as on the on the first page. Um, and then we've got objective one point one. Um, attend regular outreach events to grow the number of active registered card holders to over 15,000. So that's either resident cards or non-resident cards. Um, currently, after we did the latest purge in August, we're hitting around 10,000 right now. Could you give me an example of what you mean by an outreach event? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. So for example, this Monday, Aspen Ridge Counseling is hosting a trunk retreat. And so the library, we're going to have a table there as part of the Downtown Alliance, and we'll be passing out candy and also informing people about the library. Yesterday, I went, me and one of my staff members went to the Health and Safety Fair at Scholar Academy, um, and we had a table, and we talked to over 300 people in an hour and a half. It was, okay, it was a busy cool. night. Wow. So those kind of events, like we were at the Renaissance Fair. Um, you didn't come to my carnival. My special needs carnival. <laughs> I have to put that on this. We were going to a lot of stuff this last couple of weeks. So those kind of events are what I would, are outreach events. So um, basically just overall the goal is to see if we can increase by 50% how many card holders, active card holders, meaning that they've used their card at least once in the last two years. How many do we have now? About 10,000. Oh. So. I think the online option. Yeah. Oh yeah, people's, yeah, people's really eyes good. light up when we tell yeah. them that there's audiobooks, ebooks, and yeah. streaming. Yeah. Well, yeah. and that they could sign up online, yeah. potentially. Yeah, potentially. That's going to be a big deal as well. That would so. be huge. So I didn't put it in here because the system. What we'll see about if the system will allow it. It looks like it should. So um, next is to build up and upgrade the library's physical and digital collection to achieve annual circulation of over three hundred fifty thousand total items by the end of year fiscal year twenty twenty eight. So currently we have about um, two hundred sixty thousand items. No, I'm sorry, two seventy four. Is this last year we had. 274,000 circulations, meaning checkouts or renewals of both ebooks, e audiobooks, streaming, and physical items. How, how long do you keep a physical book in the collection before you decide it's time to let it go? Um, generally, if it's wear and tear, like it just gets so beat up that it looks terrible on the shelf, we'll let it go. Um, but then if it goes a couple, like a year or two without getting checked out, then maybe we try and display it, and if it still doesn't get checked out, then we remove it. Or if, or if it gets superseded, like some with our like windows, like we don't, we got rid of our Windows XP, right, or and things like that that are kind of, or the one that my uh, that Rachel liked to talk about was there was a history book all about Saddam Hussein in Iraq. It's like, well, okay, this oh, is wow. out of date. So, uh, <laughs> so basically, goes. if a book just sits there and isn't loved, doesn't get checked out after a certain amount of time, you're aware of that, and then you make the decision to. 
Okay. Uh, Chase, I had a question. Yes. Uh, you want to uh, increase the circulation by 2028. How much of a budget increase is that going to require? Um, I don't think it's necessarily going to require a budget increase because since we were getting the cost savings from switching to Koha Aspen and, and other things that I've been doing to optimize the budget, I don't think we'll need to increase the, oh. the budget as is. At least well, at least for this year. My, I don't think I don't need to ask for one this year because of that, okay. but we'll see next year maybe. But I, I don't plan on any budget increases currently aside from whatever the City Council does for the COLA adjustments. Yeah, the mayor was happy with that discussion. She's yes. like, oh, this is an easy one. So, <laughs> I'm like, all I need is just whatever the cost of living adjustment is, and that's it. So okay. just making, I'm optimizing the budget a lot. Yeah. So. Okay. And then objective 1.3, the library will have over 175,000 annual visits by the end of 2028. And right now we, we had about 150,000 visits. So how do you count a visit? So on our front door, there's a little laser that you don't see that, oh, uh, that dings every time someone goes through, and then we record that in a spreadsheet. So it breaks the, the beam and you're counted. Mm -hmm. cool. so. Is it on the front door of the scanner? No, it's on the front door. Uh, see, I thought so it was on the. you don't get all the toddlers that. Yeah, no, no. I, I actually, I thought that at first because my my staff didn't explain where it was. So I thought it was on the scanner gates too. So I looked on the camera and there was a kid zoom, 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 zoom. <laughs> like is he artificially increasing our numbers but, but then i talked to the staff they're like no it's on the front door we didn't put it there for that reason yeah so. uh -huh. i was just yeah. curious where the yeah, yeah. <laughs> so no and then you'll see the video of the toddler running full speed and just pow right into it that's funny because i would be like oh. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> any other any comments suggestions on this section okay um, statement two is materials, programs, and technology offered by the library will adapt to a rapidly growing community. Objective 2.1 is to have the summer reading minutes exceed 4 million minutes by the end of 2028. So we hit 2.5 million minutes this last summer of summer reading minutes. So we're How do you count minutes? Does someone just self-certify and say, I read 100 minutes? And yeah, so there's an app that you can download, or a website, it's called Beanstack. So you go into there and you log your minutes every day and you say, hey, I read for 30 minutes. And we just, I mean, we accept, I don't know, it's kind of funny when it's like two days into summer reading, someone already maxed out all the stuff, and you're like, whatever, like, I'm sure you read for 24 hours a day. Like, <laughs> but, um, and then, then you can get tickets and you put those tickets towards prizes and stuff. Oh, so there's some incentive yes. to, but no one, not enough incentive that someone would cheat on it just to get the... I mean, I think, like, one of the prizes was Hale Center Theater tickets. So, I mean... Ooh. Those are expensive. Wow. Yeah. So, I think they're, like, yes, but we I'm don't... Gonna start counting We're not going to... I thought Yeah, so it's only during yeah. summer reading, so, but we, we take people at their word. I don't know, I, I try and tell people in the county, I'm like... You could get a summer reading prize that's more than your thirty dollars a year that you pay, right? Like, so. Are those prizes donated? Yes. So we reach out to all the different businesses and they donate stuff. Like we had Drop Zone donated, said everybody who reads a certain amount gets a five dollar gift card to the Drop Zone U, and so we had so many, so it was good. Um, objective two point two is implement and maintain a quarterly newsletter for the library starting in Q one of twenty twenty five. And then 2.3, continue to be a good steward of library's financial resources and ensure a high quality patron experience by implementing a new catalog for patrons by the end of fiscal year 2025. So that's the, the Koha Aspen switchover. And also um, through careful evaluation of the library's budget, I have been able to save about $50,000 a year. Okay. So that's why I don't need to ask for a budget increase. With that. That's so. Outstanding. Um, yeah. And then vision statement three, our amazing team of librarians and program owners will give outstanding service to the community in a pleasant and welcoming environment. Um, all staff will continue to have regular self-directed training incorporated into their schedules. All library policies will be regularly reviewed and updated as needed to ensure the library is a safe, welcoming, and pleasant place for patrons to visit. And then upgrade and improve the library by enhancing the beauty and overall long-term sustainability of the library. Um, that's going to include, like I added, the signs, as well as the xeriscaping and stuff like that to make sure that we're prepared for another 50, 50 years of the library. Any questions, concerns, or comments on either of those? Okay. Do you, have, just out of curiosity, does the library have a scanner that you could like bring in like a bunch of photos and then scan them in? Like, I mean, like we have a, a printer. Like, yeah, we have, a, we have our printer, scanner, copier. Yeah. yeah. 
Mm. So it's over by the info desk. No, I'm talking like a whole bunch of pictures. <laughs> like technically, like yes, they do you with the family a, history. You can use a printer to do that, mm -hmm. but if you have a whole bunch, it might be a pain. Yeah, because yeah. you have to lift it up, put it on the glass. No, and that's yeah. no. I'm yeah. asked, talking about one of those ones that feeds it through. Like like old photos or just photos? Yes, photos. old photos. Yeah, so no, we don't have a special. We don't have that. that not not photos from here anymore. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah, not not. We don't have that type of machine. Um, yeah, that we don't we don't have that unfortunately. I think we did at one point, but I then after so. a couple of nasty experiences where like the photo got destroyed in the machine, oh. and it was a precious family photo, my my predecessor I think decided to get rid of it just because yeah. okay. the liability of that she didn't want to have to deal with it. So. Um, also, we just so we you know we had the faxing. Just as a fun statistic mm -hmm. for you, as we're talking about optimizing the finances, um, it pay, it costs us thirty dollars a month. But since we rolled it out in January, it's generated a hundred dollars of profit. So I was shocked. I thought <laughs> what was that for? Uh, the faxing. Oh, yeah. So how much do you charge to fax? Fifty cents a page. And I honestly was not expecting it to get that much use. But man, uh, those government and medical places just yeah. keep us in business. Yes. <laughs> okay. And there's not that many places you can do it. Yeah. No, so. It's kind of a forgotten. The UP per page. Yes, so 50 cents per page. Because that's basically, that would be the cost if we went, yeah, that's that's essentially what the cost is that we're paying. So we just pass that on and then if it, but if we get excessive amounts of people using it, then it is actually a profit. So it's kind of funny, there's a break even point. The break even is if we get more than six, if we get 60 pages used a month, that's our break even. But then more than that, it's profit. That's all I so you must be having a lot more than that if you're making Yeah, no, we get like 100, 150 in a month. Wow. It's crazy. Wow. So, um, so I said, since we're, since we're going to do another draft of this, I don't, we don't need to vote on it, but we'll move on. Okay, so next we will go to the technology plan. So technology plan, a lot more, for, a lot more straightforward. I'm going to skip that whole first section. This is kind of giving an introduction about the library. So if you look down the, in, where it says introduction on the bottom, it says the Tula City Public Library has three pillars of services it provides to the community that together promote education, literacy, and entertainment. Number one, the library's robust physical and electronic collection of books, movies, TV shows, and other technology items. The library's amazing programs and fun activities. The library's public computers, printing, copying, and faxing services. And then it's just a duplicate of the mission statement. Um, so then it goes over our existing technology services. Uh, just in the interest of time, I, we don't need to read through all of those. Um, I, the only change from the drafts that I get, we I gave you guys last time is just I updated it. For example, to cover the um, free Wi-Fi at Del Papa Park and the Tula City Park pool park, um, and we added two more hotspots. So now we've got 12 hotspots instead of 10 for patrons to check out because we were getting maxed out on the 10. Um, so under the goals. So the primary technological goal of the Tula City Public Library is to provide high quality computer access at the library to match the community's needs. So our fiscal year 2025 goals. Number one is to provide UPS, so uninterrupted power supplies. Um, battery backups for critical equipment and computers will be replaced. Um, to, make, to Basically we're updating those because they're getting old and we've had them for quite a while. So the reservation station for the patron computer lab is aging will be replaced. And then this one we're just wrapping up, which is utilizing the, the unit Utah Education Network's ARPA grant to expand Wi-Fi coverage and improve quality of the signal. So that's being wrapped up as we speak. And then number four on the next page is the library's credit card terminals are aging and we'll replace those as well. Um, fiscal year 2026 goals is the microfilm rate reader is aging and will be replaced. How, how often is the microfilm? Yeah, that's what reader? I was curious that's about. Um, so it's <laughs> yeah. So it is used maybe like once every couple months. Okay. It's mainly like people that are researching stuff in the transcript bulletin will come in and get the microfilm for the transcript bulletin and look through it because um, there's some years that are not available online yet. So I don't know why that is, but. Um, so it is used just minimally. Yeah, just minimally, and it's an old one that we got like 20 years ago. So looking to bring that into the 21st century as well. 
Do you know the years of material that you have from the transcript bulletin? Oh, I could go. I, we, I could go show you. It's over there. I don't have it off the top of my Super head. Super cool. Yeah. Because I've been to the transcript and just looked for that. I didn't know that you could access it here at the library. Yeah. No, we've got all the all the microfilm going back quite a ways. Every year I get we get it sent to us. So I can no, show no, you after. How far back is quite a ways? Fifty years. I think so. I think we're back to like the seventies. I'd have to go double check. I don't remember off the top of my head. Back to the 70s. Some of you weren't born. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 20 years. 20 years before I was born. So. Um, then the RFID security gates will be evaluated because they've come up on 10 years since we've had them. So we'll just make sure they're still working. And then we want to make do a deep review of the quality of the Wi-Fi access in the library and the library grounds to see about adding more access points so that people can get better Wi-Fi. And then in 2027, to replace the RFID staff stations, so the, we have scanners for scanning in the books when we check them in. And they're coming up on 10 years as well, so we want to make sure they're up to date. And then review the server that hosts the printing, Wi-Fi, and phone system. We'll make sure to update the support and review it as well as the visitor counter and the barcode scanners to see if we need to replace those, as well as start getting new computers for the patron computer lab. Um, any questions so far? Yes, what's the password, the Wi-Fi access that, that the public Oh, there's has. no password. You just connect to it and then you acknowledge and accept the terms and conditions and it connects. Oh. So you don't have to have a password. No password, great. And then the budget, the, the fiscal year 2024 technology budget was $25,300 and I'll grow and adjust those as needed to ensure the library's technological needs and goals are met. Local, state, and federal grants will be used as well to further the library's goals, and then we'll make sure we're providing updated training, and we'll review this plan yearly as well. Any questions, concerns, or comments? Okay, so I think we'll hold off on this one as well since it has the mission statement, and we'll discuss that at the next meeting. I do have one question. Yes. And maybe this isn't the appropriate place, but is there an, uh, in case of emergency plan, evacuation plan? Yes. Or, okay. So wait, I have all those, and I made those last year with the mayor and everything. She didn't, I didn't think it was a needed to bring it before the board, but yes, we have all those. Okay. So, so as an internal city document. Okay. But how do you, how do you share that information with the public? Because well, it's it's the the plans for the staff. I don't basically if there was an emergency, just to have everyone at, like. I don't know. I need to maybe let's talk after about if that needs to be something that's a public document because I the way I understood it was an, it was an internal document. Okay. So let me make a note of that. Some businesses have like a sign that's posted yeah, in case yeah. of emergency evacuation plan. Yeah. 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 Or just yeah. doctors' yeah. offices that have the arrows. Yeah. Like the map with the arrows where it's like go that way. So there's Don't the main the door of the store right here, and then there's a back door. Yeah, the staff door. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's just the, these doors and then that one. So. There used to be an emergency door by the. Oh yeah, no, there is. Sorry, you're right. There's an emergency door at the glass alcove. You're sorry. Because my son opened it. Oh, oh. no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was told that happened. Mine didn't. Okay. I'm surprised my kids didn't ever do something like that. Okay, we'll we'll they follow. Okay. Pushed it and went, oh, it's back! Oh <laughs> <laughs> we missed it. Okay. Okay. Um, and next is to approve the minutes for our last meeting, which was August fifteenth. So if everyone can just take a look at it, make sure it's all correct. Don't edit it. No. <laughs> I just like to August. What? Only on a. No, I support editing. I'd just like to make a, a suggestion. I will afterwards. Is that I wasn't just absent, I was excused. Oh, okay. And so if that's can if that can be included in the record, I'm sorry. It was How do I do that? Just change it on your yeah. from before? Yeah. Well and, and I can edit that if you'd like. I have it on Melody Five. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Uh, I had one thing that apparently escaped me last time. What is a Libby title? So it's the ebooks or audio. Uh, the ebooks. The it's called uh, the the app is called Libby that it's on. It's not just audio though. It's actually reading books. Yeah. Too. So, mm -hmm. so, uh, so could you just briefly tell what it is? Yeah. So it's an app on your phone that you can download to get audio books and ebooks. Looks like oh. And magazines. Yeah. And I was magazines. just gonna say that. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. if I wanted to 
it's, instead of searching in, not in the library, you can go to this Libby app yeah. and yeah. find it from somewhere else? Yeah, I can show you after the meeting if you'd like. Oh, okay. Okay. It's pretty cool. Okay. I love it. I don't have a lot of time to sit and read, so I'll listen to audiobooks and I'll use the app because it's free with my library card. So I like it for that. Okay. Okay. And what I also like is I can expand the font. I'm <laughs> technologically deficient, so this will be a good thing. Yeah, we'll give it a shot. It's not that hard, I promise. It's not that hard. Okay. okay. Any um, other edits for the minute? So I'll edit that. Is that part? Is that occurring? Oh, it's over. Oh, it's already over. Yeah, it finished, yeah, finished last week. Yeah. So. Do you need a motion to approve the minutes? Yes. I'll make that motion. Um, do you want to make that change from absent to excuse? Yeah, I'll make that edit. Yeah. Should we still approve them? Or do we? we yeah, I, I've never actually had to. Uh, actually, you, you did, if you make them, if you okay. change something that's on here, you have to make it in your motion. Okay. okay. Got it. Sorry, I've been in a lot I of meetings. I withdraw the motion. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Do you want to do it then, Brenda? Do you want me to make it? Go ahead. Okay. Sure. <laughs> I make a motion to the approve. The minutes um, with a change of moving Melody Gochus from absent to excused. Okay. Can we get a second? I'll second that then. After <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Library board meeting minutes have been approved from last quarter. Okay. Uh, last on our list is just to confirm the next meeting date which will be next quarter, so January, February, March. Oh, yeah. Whatever works better for everyone. I okay, well, actually, wait. I would prefer January. I was just going to say that if we're updating your mission statements and everything like that. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I would prefer January for that reason, but also because um, we'll be having a baby in Ooh, February. Congrats. 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 That works, I'll be gone the month of March. You have to bring it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> just come to the library on Wednesdays and you'll see. So. <laughs> January. The third, the third Thursday of January. The 23rd. The third or fourth? Third. 23rd. The third? Wait a minute. The yeah. third Thursday is the 16th. Yes. Oh, yeah. So either the 16th or the 23rd, whichever is, works better for you guys. I don't, care. I don't have anything on my calendar yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, wait. I'm watching Kids of the Week of the 16th. My daughter's going to Hawaii. Oh, that's <laughs> great. I'll go get in our suitcase. <laughs> so, which is it? Well, I don't care, you guys. My yeah. Everyone okay with the 23rd? Sure. Yeah. Okay, let's do January 23rd at 7 p.m. here at the library. If for you want a ride, I'd be happy quarter. to pick you up. Uh, didn't you say you live up that way? Yeah, I live up by the cemetery. Oh, it's going to be really dark in January. <laughs> I know. It's a hey, wait, uh, I can give you a ride if needed. So. Yeah. I motion to end the Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Melody. Adjourn. 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 Adjour